All right, if you guys are new to the channel, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification icon so you know I'm and streaming. And if you see, I'm about to tweet out on my Twitter that I'm live. Let anyone that's following me on Twitter know. Uh, my Twitter profile is C. It's right there. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's the best way to be alert, obviously. Now I'm going to my personal uh, Facebook, so my people on there that watch my videos know that I'm live right now. And the stream is up and running, as you guys can see. So if you guys want to follow me on Twitch, they're from YouTube. Here's my Twitch channel's name. Uh, and vice versa, for people on Twitch who want to follow my YouTube channel, because like I said, I record the live stream as well, so if for some reason the live stream like I lose connection to the internet, what have you, it will be up on the channel the next day. Uh, and my main goal for right now for my Twitch is to obviously get to 50 followers. So let's do that. I'm gonna close that. Put this over here. All right, I can see the chat. Yep. That's, all right, we are going to be playing like the title of the video says, uh, "Where the water tastes like wine." Also, have Minecraft Doki Doki. Did like the string, sorry for the channel, hit all three, four from Vegas, two mayor, Soma, Final Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Eight Remastered, uh Railway Railway, Trey Empire, Fantasy Star. Uh right now an Epic Games, so if you're a PC player, you can get Weird Water Tastes like wine for free. So Railway Empire. Which tomorrow I might be doing this. Well, tomorrow is Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sundays are my days off, so Monday I'll be doing that. Unless I get bored, then I might stream. So, like I said, follow me on Twitter, and you guys will know. But with further ado, uh, do I want to get? Oh, uh, I'd be right back real quick. I am. That's what it's gonna do. It's gonna go get some water. Get in the ghetto chair. Move the controller over here. James Carroll, professionally and in private. Natalie was mad about James Dean. Began an affair with supporting actor Dennis Hopper. And seduced director Nicholas Bray, who was 30 years his senior. I was never. No, I 
Nothing in chat yet. This means no one's keeping by. Why is that no? <laughs> Itchy, 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 itchy. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, got me water. Headphones are back on. And people on YouTube, you guys, like I said, if one's know the specs of my PC, and my setup basically let you know, and I'll post that up in the description of my next video. Alright, let's get to the game. So I take a while for it to load. Right. What's going on in my phone? I get the People are asking, hey, subscribe to my channel. No. Suffer subs, view for views, like for likes, you not want it. All right, we're in. Oh! And that's the one thing I have about these controllers is. Explore, earn money. You want the streets of the sea, looking for a way to make some cash. Panhandle or the fort. You join a crew of laborers spring on the street corner soon. A truck pulls up and everyone jumps in the back. The job's good. One woman assures you a ride a short way before the truck pulls up behind the factory. Everyone hops out and starts putting on heavy coats. But four, the whole factory is a vast cold meat locker. Your shiver, shivering is only a few minutes dragging the carcasses around and it's hard work. No one keeps you so warm, soon your hands are totally numb. We're gonna keep going. Make that money. You grit your teeth. You keep working by nightfall. You're shaking almost terribly. You're paid a full day's wages, but it's hardly worth it. Uh, so they got the store. Hot apple cider. Clam chowder, cola, root beer. We got enough for clam chowder. Red brick, green trees, blue sky is the weather. Boston is beautiful. That is until you make your way deeper into the city and get lost among the cramped, gloomy, shadow haunted old streets. Clam chowder. Uh, <coughs> now let's get some hot apple cider and we are broke oops that's not what I want to explore this city is like no other you've been to Crooked streets splay out in a maze of narrow passages, no two alike. Soon, you find yourself in twilight, utterly lost. Bright light crests around one corner, a car approaching. 
well, we are broke, so I can't... Unable to afford rescue, you keep walking. The asphalt turns to crooked cobblestones that threaten to wrench your ankle out of place. Was this always a moonless night? The stars multiply, each one looking like a pinprick through which light is exiting the terrestrial world. It's hard finding your way through in pitch darkness. You go by touch and sound, feeling the scale of the streets by the echoing of your footsteps, fingers tracing the rough surface of the buildings. And then, a rumble of noise in the distance. You quiet yourself, suddenly fearful. The clear sky tells you it's not thunder, but cannon fire. The city comes alive with fires and shouting. You find yourself trampled by a mob of men in thick brown coats, a phalanx of bayonets advancing up the street. When you come to, there's no sign of the commotion, the war that you were just caught in. The comically shrill honk of a Model A running up the road startles you, and you crawl toward the sidewalk. Above, the sky is a sharp, cold, cloudless blue. Uh, new story, a strange clover. Uh, he leans against a fence and turns to face you as you pass him by. At his back is a bag full of bird seed. He assures you that the gawky birds perching on his body are the last remaining passenger pigeons. I thought they were extinct. They look extinct to you? You're not sure those dull gray pigeons look anything like the pictures you've seen of passenger pigeons, though you can't help thinking they stare at you a little too intently. Say, you like birds? Uh, sure. They're lovely creatures. Guileless, really. Hunted damn near to extinction, weren't you? He strokes one of his birds under the chin. <laughs> you think you see picture. drips of blood flecking the creature's dirty gray head. Uh, excuse me. You sense it's about time you start moving on. You be kind to the little birds now, you hear? You hurry along the road, though the flapping of ungainly wings seems to follow you for hours. Ooh. A pigeon keeper. All right. Go back here, explore. Oh, we are exploring. Well, train station, I guess. Oh, guess we're taking the long way, guys. Oh, did the game just crash? Really? Did it really just crash? That 
Alright. Let's bring this over here too, just because. Let's say sorry. So if that happens again, I can. There's a little bit of. What just happened? for some reason. Hey there, stranger. You're welcome to enjoy this fire with me, if you're respectful, that is. All right. This here is my spot, and I ain't inclined to share it with any bad characters. You can call me Quinn. These here are my venturing companions. Kaz is the big one, and the one with the spots is Flip. All right. I usually beat my way on the rails, but the road news said this town was fat, and the weather was fine. So I'm taking in the sights and seeing what I can drum up. I want to hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Here are all the stories you've collected so far. The open is by substance because the boss likes tear cards. Just such a disturbing level. You tell the person the story about uh, for example, then you tell you something from your own life going to the subject of love or things. As the night goes on, the icon will move left to right. When it reaches the right side, the night is over, so is your storytelling. The person you're talking to will usually tell you where they be next so you can find them again. Alright. If you tell them the types of story they request to gain their trust and the eyes and the eyes will open. When it opens fully, the next time you meet them, they open up more about their life. You know my previous conversations to conversations, so don't feel you need to open the eye all the way. First time you meet someone, answer I'll get to know them. Oh. Emperor story. Past memories, the future, family, love, sadness, death changing ending, moving on, fortune look. Uh, let's go with this, I guess. Tell the story of the woman arrested for bootlegging. Whoa, quite a story, stranger. Authority, bosses and such. I ain't nobody's little Angelina, if that's what you're asking. I take care of myself and my dogs. All right. I don't need no jocker looking out for me. So if you're offering, don't. Shoot, I thought I told you to be respectful. You want to keep enjoying my spot or not? Think about that. You got any stories that are a little sad? Tell the story of the elegant woman in the small town near Portland, Maine. Huh, shoot. I ain't teared up. Just got something in my eyes, all. Sad. Oh, so you think just cause I'm young, I gotta be sad. Crying after my mama every night. No. I don't need you looking after me. So if you're offering, don't. And I thought I told you to be respectful. What you really ought to be asking yourself is if you want to keep enjoying my spot or not. Hey, tell me a funny story. You seem like you still got a sense of humor. Fortune, fate, luck. 
Story of the pin you keep around. Nope. Tell the story of the boy who ran away with his father. Tell the story of the prince who goes in the I don't think that was funny. Uh, tell the story of the two men who each was so. That one's kind of funny. <laughs> that was a chuckle to be sure. Well. I don't know a whole lot about the past, but they say there's an Injun grave around these parts. Say it's haunted and full up with angry spirits. I used to love hearing stories of cowboys and Injuns fighting it up. Would swap tales with the youngins. But, well, I suppose if someone shot me, I'd be pretty vengeful too. Yeah. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. to scare me? Well, you didn't go far enough. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Wit and some puppy dog eyes on occasions all the luck I need out here. For everything else, I got my knife and my dogs got their teeth. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. Well, I sure was a downer. Give me a good venture tale instead any day. Hmm, <sighs> death. Now why you want to go worry about that? Don't got enough on your plate as it is. Ain't nobody can avoid changing. Can't run from the dying. But the living can be mighty fine if you go about it right. Aw, oh, heck. The night's over already. I sure enjoyed talking to you, but I gotta get on. I think I'll see what's happening up the road this way. Alright, you're in Pennsylvania next, alright. Meet you there. The tramping life suits me just fine. Every day is a venture. With things being so depressed, folks walk around like it's the end of everything good. But it ain't. Plenty nice things to see if you know where to look. As you walk down the road, a black crow slutters down to land in your path. It looks at you, cocks his head, and speaks, Well, you've got a long, long road ahead of you, don't you? All these people to chase down, or so are here, at last. I got some experience when it comes to chasing folks. Tell me about it. Well, if you want, you could go find your friend again. Asking more about their life, they might want their stories this time though. Peers up at you, didn't they tell you where they were headed? Yeah. But hey, the world is full of people. Bet you could find another friend like that if you went looking around. There's more one interesting person in this land, for sure. Gives a gravely, gravely laugh. That's what humans say. Anyways, 
and with that it launches into the air and disappears. Alright, kind of spooky. Where's Pennsylvania anyways? Isn't that like in Maine? After gossiping for a while about the weather and the crops, the state of the world and all bad and getting worse, it takes a different track tack. It affects someone who likes a good story. He uses try this one for size. All right, I'm listening. After loudly and repeatedly declaring his throat, he tells you the story of Charlotte between the female bootleggers and the cops. Sounds a lot like the story of the woman arrested for bootlegging, but with some parts changed and other parts added. When he grins up at you at the conclusion of the tale, you give him the praise he apparently is expecting. But you have to remember that version is it's not quite what happened, it's a good story. Sorry, Drew, I'm telling By nightfall, the hospitality of this sleepy hamlet, combined with their superstitious tales, has both overstuffed your stomach and filled you with a hollow dread. Folks say these woods are full of apparitions, witches, and worse. You curse yourself for getting on the road so late. In the moonlight, Every valley and hollow at the feet of the Tappan Zee seems like a stolen shred of the abyss itself. Fireside tales seem less fanciful, and every cackling crow and moaning whippoorwill seems like a demon perched on the shivering, spindly trees. But something cuts through the noise. The muffled sound of hooves galloping on the cold, muddy road. When he finally slows his horse alongside you, 
It's as though he had just appeared out of the mist. He's astride a gigantic black courser. And though his boots are muddy and ragged, he wears an immaculate coat with great shining buttons. From his saddle hangs an antiquated flintlock and a cavalry saber. In the darkness, you can hardly see above his towering shoulders. His voice is a rumbling croak, deep, but as though his throat is filled with thorns. Have you happened upon a cannonball around here? You can tell English isn't his first language. German is. His hand, so pale it's almost blue in the moonlight, grips the reins in a fist. Hmm. Well, I ain't no pussy, so we're gonna... Sorry, I haven't. You mumble an apology and watch as he silently rides away, back into the mist. He's cloaked in black, you notice from behind, but the blood running down over his shoulders glints crimson in the moonlight. The Rider in the Woods. All right, uh... So I was gonna go check over here real quick. So hold on. Just gonna get this guy to run. Jesus Christ. Yeah, she's a little laggy. Are those people? Or are they houses? What is that? Let's see if we can get a good look at person. The hotel is an old manor house that's seen better days. A grand structure surmounted by a gambrel roof that dwarfs the house itself. It's eerily still, but for two boys at play. Each one so small and light, they barely leave tracks in the deep snow. Watch them and make your way inside. They seem old for their size, around ten years old. Though their clothes are mismatched, they're perfectly identical, down to the pattern of freckles on their pale cheeks. They conduct their games in eerie silence. The clerk behind the counter is old, and your room key is worn. But night approaches, and the price is low. Just before you shut the room door, there they are, the twins, staring at you from the corridor. All right, that's not creepy at all. That's like freaking what? Uh, the shiny? <laughs> In the morning, as you leave, the clerk asks, did you sleep well? Tell the truth. Too tired to lie. You tell him about the noise outside your door, the trampling of small feet on the corridor outside, the dreams disturbed with violent and hideous images. That's odd, he says, weak-eyed. There are no children staying with us. Uh, straight up from the shiny. 
Alright, let's move on. Silent Twins. Yeah, I'm with a heart attack. Let's go this way before we go to New York and give some money. As you walk along the river near an unfinished bridge, a man with a tool belt catches sight of you. Hey, over there, he calls out. You look like you could use a quick way to get some hard-earned money. Hard-earned is right. The bridge hangs high over a perilous drop. Let's make that money. Great! He exclaims. Suppose you'll want a safety belt. We Thunderbird people don't need them. We fly when we fall. He chuckles. Oh, I would have belt up to be on the safe side. You find yourself up high, looking over the rushing river that crashes around the foundation of the bridge. As you work side by side, the man mentions... You can see Thunderbirds up here if you know how to look. Inquire. You ask him to explain. Practice your peripheral vision, if you dare. Last thing you need up here is for them to see you seeing them and come swooping at you. He says, laughingly. All right, give it a try. You only see the clouds thicken. It sure does pass the time working. The man pays you well when you're done with the job. All right, thanks for the cash. The bridge builders. I don't think I can go this way, but we're gonna check. Yeah, this is a thought. Backtrack here real quick. Oh, that's Burlington? Yeah, I've been there. Alright. Bathroom quick and such. Mm -hmm. There's a book here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm 
as it is at the moment. We pray the shine in your heart and search your heart. Well, I'm going to cast my stones over the waters of this land, and by and by, I'll see them come along, cause when the night comes down, I'm going to take me hand in hand, and I'll take my favorite song. Air stinks of gasoline and trash in your boxing by Rick. But damn, there's something to figure out about that stink guy. Feel like there's an engine in your chest. You wander the streets of the, of the city looking for a way to make some money. 
Shouts echo from nearby LA if you discover a crowd of men unloading sacks from a truck as fast as they can. When the truck empties, it wears away and air surges up to take its place. The sacks are open, heavy, and stained with dark smears. That's because they need help. Yes, yeah, sports and labor. Do we ever? An older filler, however, throws out his arm to shut the man up. Uh, we don't need any help with this stuff, he says, sticking close to a scurrier view of the goods. Want to fetch your water instead? He wiggles a few coins in your direction. Sure. You fill your pillow at the nearby gas station when you return, though. The men are waiting in the alley, innocent as anything. They wash the sticky residue off their hands in the water, and your boss passes you a couple coins. There's no sign of goods anywhere. Alright. The engines belch black smoke as the ferry churns gray water into froth. A broad-shouldered figure leans out over the rail, eyeing the skyscrapers on the horizon. Nearby, a man and a woman speak in low, urgent voices. He takes her wrist gently. She is weeping softly. I wish you didn't have to go, she says. There's got to be work on some of those buildings going up. His thumb skates over her pulse point. I checked every day for a week. There ain't. I'll be back, though. Got your picture in my wallet, don't I? It's not forever. Her words are split by a sob. Might as well be. My parents didn't come to New York for this. She leans against him, the wind tossing her hair. He pulls her to his chest. I'm leaving because I gotta go. If there was another way... They stand together, close, quiet, in the stiff breeze. Jet black crow, the light on the low branch of a twisted tree. Look at you, it galls. Think you got some good stories already? Well, I heard better, much better. <laughs> Seems to wink at you. Want to hear my tricks? Ask about the stories. Ones you got now, Psh, pathetic stuff. Tell those stories around and they will come back more exciting, more satisfying. So always listen to the stories. Other folks tell their tales are less true, sure, but more useful around the campfire. Makes sense. The boss has a point about the true ones, though. Crow admits. They're extra interesting. You learn a couple of folks' true life stories and everyone will like them. No matter what kind of story they think they want to hear. Any tips? Well, anyone's the captain of their destiny. It gives a burst of laughter. <laughs> Ain't no bootstraps in the world that can save you now. But the choices you make. They change the kind of story you can tell. It ruffles feathers short of shrug. Choose wisely or don't. Ha! Explorer. I'm gonna save the 
already though. You know it's a black crow sitting in the fence post watching you with some intensity. Hey, it blurts. Hey, Fred. Hey, you hear about the trains? He gives a throaty crackle. Look a motion. That's the life. I got some travel tips here. Ask about the travel. You ever ride the train? It asks. With your budget, you need to pop on at a train yard though. Pass the convenience, but the river bulls really don't like it. When you ride in the empty box cars, you get caught, you get beaten. It hops and pecks at something on the ground. Hmm. On the positive side, maybe you meet someone to trade stories with, but if you don't like the sound of that, you could hitchhike on a friendly car. It laughs. I feel sad for you, land lovers. No wings, just motors. You can't even cross rivers when you want to, only at safe crossing. You got a point there. I always do. You notice that it speaks, doesn't move as it speaks, but before you can tell anything else about it, it often flies. The stream is a clear, reflective shade of blue, unusual in this region where bog iron colors the river's brown. Across the way, a goat with great leather wings laps up the water, its sunken red eyes fixed on your every movement. You now notice the unnatural absence of wildlife. No fish swim in the stream. No birds sing in the trees. The winged goat drinks with a forked tongue, only abstractly concerned with your presence. What? <laughs> the water approaches the goat. Over the hill, a scorched one-room house lies abandoned, two of its four walls in ruins. The goat rears up, front hooves curled, and stretches its wings out to their full breath. No the goat opens its mouth and wails, a protracted, shrill sound, indistinguishable from the cry of a human infant. It only begins to stop when you take several steps back. Oh my god, chicken out. The winged goat doesn't follow. Instead, it lies down inside the burnt house, surrounded by portraits of a large family, glass frames stained brown from smoke. Mean goat by Christine Water. We can hitchhike or we can try to. Cities in Pennsylvania. Where 
there is. I just keep going straight, I've run into him, so he's somewhere in that direction. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if there's anything this way. Story. Listen to this alerts the boy learning outside the grocery store. He works his way through the long and strange story about the dead woman in the yellow weather. There he finishes. What do you think? Wait a minute. Holy crap, you know that story? It's a story of an elegant woman in a small town, but Riley altered for a couple moments. He too surprised to respond. Seriously, the boy insists. What do you think about this? About that one? Can't be real. Well, it's a great tale, no, but the true story is. This delight. What? That's what I told my brother. He exclaims. But he dunked me in the rain barrel and punched me. That sucks. You tell him. The kid shrugs. Put wasp in the cup and held it on his back while he was sleeping. So we're square now, I guess. Trey grew. Right. His clothes are expensive but unkempt. A tailored jacket stretched and warped out of its best fit by long days on the road. His thinning frame weighs down the boxcar next to yours. You got a light, friend? Sure. You offer a match, which bends and nearly snaps as he scratches it against the pitted iron edge of the boxcar. Thanks, he mumbles, perching one last cigarette on his lip. So where you're going? Don't rightly know where I'm going. You notice how deeply wrinkled his clothes are. It's as though a huge hand plucked him from a high society party and crumpled him up like a sheet of paper. Don't rightly know how I got going either. Why? They built a railway just past Missy Hudson's estate. Damned racket ruined our soiree. Might have been a few bottles of Armagnac too many when I walked down the tracks to tell them to keep it quiet. He drags on the cigarette, but you never see him exhale. Alright, let's move on. The last bottle of Armagnac. Armagnac, what you call it? Well, let's see what's going on over here. My twin brother Paul and I always <coughs> got into trouble, but we were good. We didn't do nothing to anybody till we left. Sure. Then we hurt a lot of people. Me, more so than Paul, because he, well, he didn't make it through. Damn. The march I was on, the bonus army, it's less a bonus and more an acknowledgement of what I've had to suffer. Civilians will never understand. All right. Know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. Tell the story of the two 
That was really funny. This one's kind of funny. I wish I could tell that one to my sister. The past doesn't even feel like it happened. It feels like it's happening in every moment, in every slumber. When the memories come back to you, do they clutch at you, at your heart? So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. That can't be true. That sounds like a Navy tale. Freedom is getting paid what you deserve, and getting enough to get by. Freedom is the ability to be free of pain. So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. like that one. Travel. Well, this walk feels like a little bit of freedom now and again. The flowers along the road make for fine company. Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? some hope left for you too, you know. Don't give it away too quickly. The future's the issue, ain't it? A great war leaves us nothing to go back to, plucking up the hope and leaving us only with the vile and the unforgiven. Know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. Here's the sun. I've got to go. I'm headed up the road this way. Will our paths cross? Alright, you're gonna be at the court of New York. Maybe. Days come and go and the terrors return. They'll never be able to pay back what they owe me, but I'll always keep at them. What about you? Is there something somebody owes you?
clouds roll together to fill the sky. What's a sky tree? The lightning is so strong that it seems to open a path in the haze above you. You are sure you see massive talons curved around the clouds. The thunder is so immense that the ground trembles. Your lips and hands tingle from the electric charge that fills the air until the dancing lightning passes on over the hills. Massive thunderstorm. The women are oblivious to your approach. Their eyes are shut. Their touch, where they hold hands, is gentle. They speak in low tones. One stifles a burst of laughter, but it brings a smile to their faces. Sorry, says the one who laughed. Don't be, another assures her. They don't look up. The branch snaps beneath you. The youngest jerks her eyes open and snatches her hands free from the circle. It's all right. He isn't coming back, soothes the eldest. She turns to you. You could join us, if you've got something you're grateful for. Your words go unremarked. The youngest... Holding your right hand takes her turn. And we give thanks for those who left, who we wanted gone, for the skills to thrive without them, and for the companions who make the effort joyful. Your hands are released. The ceremony is over. Women pray to Want to make some cash? This woman asks. She balances in the box of bread and lettuce on her head. You help her grill hot sandwiches in a tent at the edge of a county fair. Work is easy as hell, and she pays you decent money too. Oh, make some cash.
Outside the small thicket of apple trees, the phrase tended to by John Chapman is carved into a fence post. Nearby, a hound lies on its side, perfectly still. Flies buzz around its ears. But a grizzled man pauses at his digging to shoo them off. There's an extra shovel. With it, the two of you make short work of the grave. He tells you about his beliefs, why he's raising apple orchards in the middle of the country. It's a sin to graft, he tells you. Hurts the tree. Eventually, the hole is deep enough. He stoops to the ground and lowers the pup into the earth. Tears flow freely. I'll see him again in heaven, he tells you. Our souls are bound by love. He wipes his eyes. I don't think I can bear to stay here, though. Maybe I'll set out again. John Chaplin is orchard in his dog. Alright, that's... Not where I want to go. Chapter 2 of that guy. You come across a girl picking wild blueberries. She smiles and greets you. Anin. She offers you some from her birch bark basket. Thank you. You reach in the basket for blueberries, but pull out a handful of small, smooth stones. 
all the colors of the rainbow. The snickering girl runs into the trees as fast and light as a rabbit. I could be evil. Throw the stones. <laughs> the stones tumble from your hand and hit the ground, instantly turning black as the night. Your heart leaps in surprise. How strange. The girl with the strange stone. It's break time. At this half finished bridge, the workers are gathered around a young man who sits on a bucket like a king. They listen rapidly to a story about the four identical men born to two different mothers who confuse themselves amongst each other. He realizes the story of the two men who each took one another for his missing brother. But heavy embellished young man on the bucket tells what's masterfully doing all the voices as if he told it this way a thousand times before. What a story. Something close to what actually happened, but this version is pretty good. You have an easy time remembering it. Stranger, it's good to see you again. You know, I'm gonna see this whole world one day. But for now, I just got my sights set on seeing all 48 of the great U.S. I already seen 10 whole states. That's better than my folks ever done, that's for sure. Plenty of townies and even some tramps treat me like I'm kid simple. But I ain't helpless. And I only act it when I ain't got no better choice. Like if I get pinched. I do right fine on my own. Don't need nobody but Cass and Flip. I'm in the mood for something real funny like. Something funny, you said. A fool. Not sure I quite follow that one. In this country. I don't rightly know what this thing called America is. I know what I done been told in school, but the words don't fit the picture. What with tramping across the whole thing, figure I'll find out for myself soon enough. I wanna hear one of them venturing tales. Got any? and telling sweet happy tales if in the make you snooze and the past is just that past the whole world is at my feet so why bother talking about the one place i can't go to no more hey tell me one of those exciting stories
I usually like the scary stuff, but your story needed more punch, I think. Being trapped, caged, you think beggardom is a prison? No, stranger, beggardom is freedom. Responsibility is the real trap, wound tight like an old spring. Pride and pretending will bleed folk dry, and then when there ain't nothing left to be proud of, when they can't pretend no more, they'll unwind. I want a story that scares me. Now I'm older, almost nobody can do it. Give me your best shot. Wow, that's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. Hmm, sadness. Ain't seen no sight sadder than in the city. In the city, they want you to feel like a giant among giants, like you can do anything. But I seen them shanty camps full up with folks who got nothing to eat or do. Cities serve to make the small feel smaller. Hey, do you got any really thrilling stories to tell? I'm hankering for one of those. Whoa, quite a story, stranger. Change. Change ain't coming, stranger. It's already here, so they say. Got a whole country tied together with rails and roads and still can't feed everybody. Between you and me, I think that ain't ever gonna change. Can or can't got nothing to do with it. Well, sun's coming up, so I've got to get ready to go. Thanks for the tales, friend. Where you heading next? Decided yet? Maybe our paths will cross. I'm going up the road this way myself. Hope I'll see something fun. I generally do, you know. There's interesting things to see everywhere if you keep your eyes open. Yes, there is. track heading oh, there's no story here the waitress at the stand here is sharing an outlandish tale with one of her regulars I heard it from my sister-in-law she says it happened to her daughter's friend it's true she knows she's listening hey have you heard this one before? She regales you with a story about the devil of leaves. Halfway through, you realize that it's a story of the winged goat by Christy War, but highly embarrassed. What do you think about that? Richest claims. It's an interesting tale. It sure is, she agrees. A true heavy word of it. Well, yeah, is that true?
piece of cash, a man asks if he just moved in down the street and needs help carrying boxes from the curb into the house. Two of my back out this morning. Size. Lift with your legs. That's my tip. You take his advice and he pays you well. A long black car grows up in front of this hotel. One steps out, steps a woman in a straggling hat and coat, followed by a whole crowd of hangers on. She's a singer and actress. You don't recognize her face, but to your surprise, you recognize the story she's telling. Sharp transatlantic accent. She's telling everyone in her party. Story about the headless Hessian of Sleepy Hollow. It's clear the story of the rider in the woods, but changed in a few entertaining ways. Keep listening in. Isn't that something? She asks. Her various followers agree. She pays the driver of the limousine and sweeps into the hotel like a thunderstorm with red velvet. Someone should do a picture about it. You hear her exclaim. Boy, well, they knew it was too and tell it. First, Ma and Pa wanted me and Paul on the front lines. They wanted someone to be proud of, and I did as they asked. But then the government wanted me to take an IOU, and I did. When there were no more jobs, I, along with thousands of others like me, went and asked Hoover to pay up. General MacArthur was so scared of us, he brought in goddamn tanks to keep us from tearing apart DC. So anyway, tell me a funny story? You seem like you know a few good ones. Oh, come on. That doesn't sound real. The government's not much when it don't provide. It's just empty promises and broken beliefs. Broken hopes. Faraway bullets. Tell me a... happy story. Something to make the world seem kind. I liked that one. There's some hope left for you too, you know. Don't give it away too quickly. The past? I wish I could go back. Before I had to mourn. And before all the hope was drained from me. Right. Know any good jokes? I'm not so good at telling them anymore. Why are you asking for jokes, dude? I haven't learned of any new ones.
Look at that one, that one's kind of funny. <laughs> I don't mean to be rude, but civvies don't understand what real tragedy is. My family won't look at me anymore. They only see Paul. I cannot put them through that every day just for my sake. Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? Got nightmares enough without hearing that kind of horror. Love? All the connections. Which is what love is, isn't it? Drowned in the mud in no man's land with Paul. But love comes in so many forms. I love now the ability to walk more dearly than ever. I love more deeply the sun and the earth. Do you know any happy stories? Hopeful ones? For a moment there, just a moment, I felt better about it all too. Freedom. Not many of us are free from suffering. Well, war is doing the opposite of stopping that. The night's over soon. I should be leaving. The road takes me this way next. Where's it taking you? I wish there was a road I could take home. Home as I knew it. To my sister Jessie, and all of them before the war. But there ain't. It's something I think the road is helping me to understand. Oh my freaking god. Let's keep heading. Oh, there's an auto pad. I didn't know that. 
Let's go this way. Ah, uh, that's what it's name again. Right, there's a new person there, new person there. Oh, River Crossing, that's what this are. Some money. One of the streets at sea looking for a way to make some cash. That's a pan handle. So it's not a crazy story for your hand. Your hat out into a young man in an apron quite they ask you to leave. My mom she's gonna come out and kick your ass. He whispers. Let her try. Kid whispers, he takes it around in his pocket. Comes up with a couple coins and throws them down in your head. He begs you to go. She's not joking. Oh, I want to see this shit. <laughs> Freeze back inside. You know, melts aside and watch some folks go by. A few more coins landing in your hat. Sun's warm up. People are friendly. This is almost relaxing. Wake up very slowly when they ass kicking mom flings you over the nearest hedge. Yeah, she bellows. Your hat and your coins follow, scattering grass, trying blood smear butcher who threw them salts back into the store. It's hard to look at these shiny buildings in the direct sunlight. You feel like an ant crying among the tombs of giants. 
away from the moments. You find a city that is no more human. The mailman's uniform is dated and worn. He sits on the edge of the road, head in hands. He looks up as you approach. Can you help? Car clip me. I think my legs... Well, I'd appreciate it if you could deliver this for me. He holds out a brown envelope. Sure, I can do that for you, buddy. The letter's addressed to a James Gibson Sr. 120 J Street. But the city stymies you. The blocks run straight from I to K. He stop a man for directions, but he shakes his head and laughs. <laughs> Someone's playing a joke on you. There's no J Street. Over here. A woman in a brown coat overheard your question. She steers you down an alley. Someone's chalked a big orange J on one wall. I thought Clovis was late. Go left up ahead. Old man Gibson's the third on the right. As you round the corner, the world changes. J Street is a place out of time. Like the city forgot an entire street a century ago and carried on around it, oblivious. Even the noise and bustle of D.C. can't penetrate this little pocket. The man who answers is ancient and stooped. He peers at the letter. I think it's from my son. I don't see so well anymore. Will you read it to me? You tear the letter open. It isn't good news. I ain't gonna lie. He fights it. But his face crumbles. Tears roll down his cheeks. It's better to know. I've been waiting a long time for this. His shaking hand takes the letter. Thank you for telling me. No problem. Strange Street, Lost in Time, Washington, D.C. Let's hear root beer, ice cream, Coca Cola, apple juice. It's all health with disease, huh? After root beer. Train station. Like the receipt now, so on YouTube, like, share, 
Hey, look at this. Subscribe. Here's a link to my Twitter account. Follow. Try to get 50 followers. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.